Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when this video catches you. As a quick reminder, the book, But Hey, What Do I Know, is available at Amazon and through me. I shut down the original site uh, where the book was available. And so you can get it also at Barnes & Noble. But if you'd like an autographed copy, you can email me at myronjones at gmail.com. That's M-Y-R-A-N-J-O-N-E-S at gmail.com. Or you can call and leave me a message at 866-609-7678. Again, that number is 866-609-7678. And so, I was a former athlete, track and football. But why is it we only promote athletics or entertainment as the only way we can accomplish? Why do we make fun of those students who are smart? What kind of conditioning is that? Not long ago, a group of black teens beat up a classmate because he made the honor roll. It's not white people making fun of our smart students. In reality, they are threatened by our smart students, but we make fun of our smart students. <laughs> Amazing how that works. It's us. I remember when I was in college. I was riding a bus home one night, and there was a young lady sitting in a seat near me. A guy, a guy got on the bus and tried to engage her in conversation. She wasn't interested and let him know in a real nice way. He turned and pointed at me. I was reading in one of my books, and he asked her, well, if he were trying to talk to you, you know, being a college guy, I bet you would talk to him. I mean, I had nothing to do with the conversation. She wasn't interested. And unfortunately, he didn't know how to take the hint. Well, and I mean, it wasn't a hint. She was pretty clear with it. You know, our parents go out and work several jobs so that kids can get looked at by college coaches in all of these athletic camps. You know, because those athletic camps are not free. And I'm not saying all parents, but a great deal of them. They're hoping for the child to get a scholarship and eventually get drafted so the child can get a big payout and then turn around and take care of them. But, as my sister and brother-in-law told me one time, they went to the mall one day and there was a line outside of the athletic store to get a ticket to buy the new Air, you know what they are, when they came out. They, they got in line just to get a ticket. We will stand in line for something that loses immediate value. We do realize this gentleman made a name for himself first, don't we? <laughs> what if we took those dollars and paid for a seminar for us and our kid to attend on wealth building? What if we bought some of Robert Kiyosaki's books or Dave Ramsey's books or John Sustina's book? What if we went to some of the seminars that the Small Business Administration sponsors each week? Our system of schooling, and notice I said schooling and not education, was patterned after the Prussian system of Germany. This system was designed to develop the type of people who were good at taking orders. I keep talking about the school system because the school system is designed for us not to make it in society. As my mentor says, it's a formula for failure. And that formula is go to school, get a good education, and get a good job. And we have learned to applaud failure while jobs are being outsourced. Am I putting college down? No, I went to college. All of my sisters went to college. But if you have a profession that needed education, by all means, get the education. I don't want any person off the street who's only played the game operation <laughs> cutting on me on an operating table. <laughs> I don't want some guy who has read a couple of paragraphs on legal zoom to represent me in court. <laughs> you know, the talent and tip was put in place by W E B Du Bois. And it said that the top in the race were to make it and reach a hand back. Well, in reality, that's not what it was for in reality. It's doing exactly what they set out to do originally, but they told 
they told the people that's what they were going to do <laughs> to get the people to support them burning rubber out of the black community as fast as they could. And so, first of all, what he really was saying was that only 10% of black people had the mental capacity to accomplish in the top professions. Secondly, they were selfish individuals and they never reached their hand back to assist anyone. And then they had the nerve to frown upon anyone whom they felt would not accomplish at the same rate as them, even though a lot of them got a hand. You know, if we start to change our mindset and our approach to college, we could do much greater things. If we went into college with the thought that I would eventually open my own firm of business, our entire mood would shift from one of employment to one of empowerment. If they can satisfy you with a job straight out of college making around fifty to 70000 a year, they hook you. Especially when the average income in this country is around 35000 So basically what, the, what you're thinking is, well, I'm making above the average, so I'm better than somebody else. Do you realize that the average middle class income was $61,000 in 2009? And today, that same income is about $47,000. Uh, now, of course, anything out of college is better than nothing. And that is what the system is counting on. They are counting on you having nothing and willingly accepting anything. Then we walk around thinking, I'm doing better than most people. What we don't realize is the more they pay you, you're the one who falls the hardest in a downsizing. I asked the guy one time if he would rather make 50000 in a business of his own or 200000 as an employee, and he said, give him the two hundred. <laughs> and I had to explain to him that he has the control over the fifty, but not the two hundred. We have to create an environment in our community that show we care. When we take it upon ourselves to throw trash out of our car windows, we have the wrong mindset. When we allow bad elements to roam our streets, tearing up things and not say anything, we cannot foster an empowered uh, mentality. When a criminal element knows the community is watching, their behavior has to change or they go somewhere else or face the consequences of their behavior. Would you allow someone to come into your house as you sit on the sofa and steal? You must treat your community the same way. We cannot empower our community if we take all of our dollars and pour them into another one. Just as we did after the Civil Rights Act was signed, we gave our dollars to people who didn't like us because of people's paper said they had to do business with us. How long would you try to kiss your wife if she didn't want to, even though your marriage certificate says she was legally bound to you? Oh, you could try and force her to, but why would you want to? For some strange reason, we thought a piece of paper made us equal. Well. We claim to be spiritual people, but I think we more lean toward the religious people versus spiritual people. Uh, I would like to say we claim to be godly, but we more religious. We're not godly. And so if God's word said you're equal, why are you waiting on a man to tell you you're equal? And so for some reason, we thought the product on the other side of town was better because they were they had a different skin color. Even though they got supplied by the same company as our black owned businesses. Even though this happened in the 60s, it still happens today. I heard about a guy whose convenience store had been there for years and blacks wouldn't even support it in large droves. He said a new convenience store open that's foreign owned, supplied by the same distributor, charges more money, and black people can't get enough of a competitor store. We got a messed up mentality. We had affirmative action that said we can't compete, so we needed a helping hand. Why did the people who went to fight only fight for 10%? Why not open a field up for a total at everybody and everything? What you, don't, what you need to know is everybody in this country is a minority except the white male. And he put his business in his wife's name to get the contracts he lost back. Our business, I mean our political base, actually shifted from one of pro-business to one of employee-mindedness. We never empower ourselves by running the politicians who are lobbied handsomely against our interests to go to bat for us. Best thing we can do is get some economics in there and vote them out. The reason they don't do nothing for us is because we ain't got no money. When you have economics, 
ironically, their hearing gets a lot better. When you don't have economics, they listen, but they don't hear you. I don't know how many of you remember a few years ago at a town hall meeting, one of the local Congress people took a phone call in the middle of one of her constituents talking and asking her questions. They feel disdain for us. And they're supposed to be serving us. What we need to get back to is making our misrepresentatives become the servants of us like they're supposed to instead of them treating us like we're supposed to serve them. They don't hear us. When we get some economics, we will be able to dictate policy in our own communities. We will be able to tell them what we will accept and what we won't. We have to have a group of people who understand which policies help us and which ones hurt us and then be able to convey that message to the community. If you don't have a focus on business, you can't help others in your community understand the devastating effect it has by not having viable businesses. As a member of the community, you have to bring things to the attention of the owner that are not acceptable. One of the things we do in our communities is uh, we allow foul language in our establishments. If I hear this, I bring it to the owner's attention. It's a sign of poor professionalism and character. If it continues every time I shop, I'll take my business elsewhere. What if we started businesses in our communities and each owner committed to paying into an account that is set up for the sole purpose of assisting an up and coming business owner who has a solid plan? What if we contributed a small set amount on a monthly basis with the intention of starting our own banks and financial institutions? Then we make sure the business succeeds by spending our dollars with the business. We make sure we have a sound financial planner who can help direct our affairs. What if we could get all of the local black churches to participate in a similar program for potential college or vocational or technical uh, school students? How about we approach the foreign owned companies with the same idea? We're not going to ask them to help fund new businesses because they will not support competition. Let's ask them to contribute to the scholarship fund for students in a the community they do business in. If they say no, then we stop supporting their business. We can then employ our youth instead of complaining about the high unemployment rate among black youth when we own the establishment. We can become the loan officers for our people instead of them going to get turned down by larger institutions for whatever reason. We are at a point in our communities where the foreigners don't even hire blacks unless it is a young female and the ones doing the hiring are guys. So that's for obvious reasons. We know what's going on, but we won't address it because we have no job to replace it. And since we have nothing to offer, the abuse continues. We don't even protect our females from that type of stuff anymore. Now they, they will hire lots of people of Hispanic or Latino descent. And I'm not saying anything's wrong with that, but they treat our black women like objects. The business owner and the Hispanics take the money we give them and leave our community and take the money into theirs. None of them spend their money in our community, depleting us of its financial resources. Our communities continue to have economic enemas because no money is circulating in them. It goes right out of our hands into everybody else's. It's like trying to hold the wind. When was the last time you saw a foreigner spending money in your community or neighborhood? They bring their food from home, so they don't even want to eat the food they're serving you. But they offer us everything we want and need. They play our music in their store so we can buy it from them. They sell us fake hair and our women have the worst hair issues in society. They sell us fried chicken, fried fish, and alcohol. And swisher sweets. They own the dry cleaners and laundromats. Have any of them opened an institution to actually help you? When was the last time you saw a credit union, bank, accounting firm, financial planning office, decent looking doctor office, law firm, or a 24 hour emergency clinic? But our churches sure look nice. 